All right, give him another great big hand. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you have your Bibles this morning, let's go to the book of Psalms, the 32nd chapter. Psalms 32. Psalms 32, verse 8 through 11. I'm reading from and teaching from the New International Version of the Bible. If you had a King James word, it would be just a little bit different, but we'll all end up in the same place together. Psalms 32, starting with verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with uh, my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by uh, bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Verse 10. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the, the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. And you righteous, sing. All you are upright in heart. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. Let us hear your word, not man's. Let us sink it deep in our heart that we might uh, live to be the kind of people that would be pleasing unto you. So, Father, speak to us this morning. Let us hear your voice and yours alone, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 If you had to write one sentence, one sentence about your life counting or making a difference, what would you say? Just one sentence about your life how it's counting or making a difference. What would you say? The fact is we all affect people in one way or another. Every single one of us here this morning, we affect somebody one way or another. It's either in our, our job, it's uh, in our families, it's when we go out into the world, but we're all affecting people. Now we affect people two ways. We can affect them positively, so when they have an encounter with us, they've had a good encounter, they've enjoyed it, they've seen Christ in us, they're motivated to live more for Jesus, or they can see the other side of us, which is not Christ-like. Uh, can, we can, we've all run across people uh, who are having bad days or having, uh, you know, uh, you know, having a bad time or something wasn't going right and they seem to take it out on you. The fact is we affect all other people in one way or another, whether it's our family co-workers or friends. That's why we should carefully consider what our lifestyles, words, and attitudes are communicating to those around us. How we live should give credibility to the message we have concerning Jesus Christ, which can make an eternal difference in the lives of other people. And so if you have one sentence to write about to how your life is making a difference or, or your life is counting, what would you write in that line? That I'm making a difference when I go to the store by having a smile on my face. I'm making a difference in the era of COVID-19. Now this is, you know, this is, things are different now, right? We're living in a, in a, a different world at, at this point. But we're making a difference during the era of COVID-19. Maybe by being a little bit more lenient on the little girl that's going to wait on you today at the, at, the, um, at the restaurant. Maybe tipping her a little bit bigger because she went months without work. Maybe tipping her if you've got the means a little bit more because there's going to be other people to come through there that have lost their jobs as well that don't have us the ability to do what you can do today. Maybe we affect people around us in the era of COVID-19 simply by putting a mask on. Now, I hate those things. I hate them. <laughs> I, I like the one I got because it's got a big, nice Patriot sign on the front of it. John, do you agree with that? But I asked, uh, I did ask RJ this morning. I said, R he come here to see me. I said, RJ, you like my mask? You know what he done? He shook his head no. I got a feeling Grandpa has been having some talkings with that young man. We need to pray that Grandpa quits leading him down the wrong path here. <laughs> 
but simply by putting on a mask to make somebody else feel safe. You might not like it. I don't like it. But that's just something that we can do as believers, whether we agree with it or not. That's our attitude towards everything defines who we are in living a life that makes a difference. So how we live should give credibility to the message that we're talking about when we talk to others about Jesus. It shouldn't be we're talking to others about Jesus and they look at our lives and say, well, if that's how they're going to live for Jesus, I don't want to have a part of it. There's many folks will tell you, come to church, uh, they'll invite you to church, but then live like hell Monday through Saturday. That's not the example we're trying to set. We're trying to set an example of godliness, of living for Christ, not only on Sunday, but every day of the week. And so I'm going to give you some things this morning to think about how our life can impact. How we can make our life, moving from this day forward, make our life count for something. Number one, God has promised to teach us. God has promised to teach us how to live as He desires. God has promised to teach us how to live as He desires. Look at, uh, go to, hold your place there and look at Psalms 32. Psalms 32, uh, well, that's where we're at, verse 8. Look at 8 and 9. I will instruct you and teach you in the ways that you should go. That's what he says there again. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. Now listen, you say, well, God's not saying nothing to me. I understand God's not saying anything to you if you're not picking up this book. But if you're picking up this book and you're reading it, God is speaking to you. Every time you read one of, the, one of these chapters, one of these verses, don't look at it as I'm reading a book. Look at it as God is speaking to you. This is the manual. This is the, the guide to get us through life. If we've done what this thing says, we would get what it says that we can have. And so every time that we open up this Bible, he's speaking to us. He's instructing us and teaching us the way that we should go. And I like this next example, verse 9. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle. If you don't control them, they'll not come to you. So he tells us you got an option. You can be a person of learned understanding. You don't have to have a high school education. You don't have to have any of that. I had an uncle that couldn't read anything. Uh, but when he got saved, God gave him the ability to read the Bible. And so we don't have, uh, he says, don't be like a horse or a mule. Some of y'all say, I've already got a mule in my family already. Wish I had a horn. Wish you had a horn? <laughs> Since each of us have been uniquely created, God's plan for us are individually crafted. Listen, not everybody's plan is the same. Not everybody's passion is the same. Not everybody's calling is the same. We're all individually created, and we've all got an individual task that God has called us to do. In my life, God called me to ministry. This probably wouldn't be for everybody else. In Pam's life, he called her to be a, a preacher's wife. I can guarantee you that can't be for everybody else. In Pam's life, she, he called her to be my husband. That's a special calling in and of itself. It takes us, it, uh, believe me, it takes a special lady to put up with me, especially as I'm getting older. I drive her crazy most times of the day. She hit her three, uh, a minute ago asked me four times the same question. I said, what'd you say? Huh? I don't understand what you're saying. Each of us are individually crafted. The Lord has entrusted more responsibility to some than others. But this doesn't mean that those with greater influence are more important. I'll never forget a time I was struggling. I was struggling in my, my life. I was struggling in my walk. I was already a pastor, but I was struggling. I'd had my first back surgery. I'd had our, we had our first child, and I wasn't able to uh, continue to go to, um, to finish my seminary degree. And I'll never forget Dr. Bill Mackey. I don't know if some of y'all know who Dr. Bill Mackey is, but Dr. Mackey used to be the president of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. 
And uh, Dr. Mackey come from uh, Louisville down to um, the church I was at to speak. Just so how God worked it out that particular morning, Shandy was born, not Travis. Shandy was sick that morning, so Pam couldn't go to Mount Sterling Church with me. So I went by myself. And as it worked out, Dr. Mackey's wife was sick that morning, and he came to Mount Sterling by himself. And so this is not the first time that we had been together. We'd been together several other times and been out to eat. But this time it was just me and him. So we went, I figured that when we took him out to eat, you know, we, he's a doctor. Doctor wants to go somewhere nice to eat. And I said, Dr. Mackey, there's all kinds of restaurants in Mount Sterling. There's, there's a nice place, this place. I said, you want to go here? You want to go there? He said, do you have a Long John Silver's? <laughs> I thought, wow, I'm trying to buy you a steak and you want fried chicken or fish or whatever they got in that place. So we went to we went to um, uh, uh, Long John Silver's. We sit down and eat. And he began to ask me some questions. And I began to tell him, I'm frustrated, Dr. Mackey. My back, I've had back surgery. I can't work. I can't finish my degree. And I don't know if I'll ever get it finished. And in that particular season of my life, when I needed to hear somebody say something to me, a man of great importance in the state of Kentucky for the Baptist Convention looked at me and he said these words, and I'll never forget them. He said, you might not ever get that degree. And he said, that doesn't lessen the call of God on your life to preach the gospel simply because you don't have your degree done. You go do what God's called you to do. And I thought about that for a minute. He was of, of great influence. Had talked with probably presidents and all kinds of different people. But at that particular moment, here was a young man in his, early, in his late 20s that was struggling, that needed, needed to hear from somebody who had been in my role before. Now, other people can tell you that, but it's, it's interesting that, uh, you know, you need to know preachers need other preachers to speak to them. It's a, it's a calling that not everybody understands. And so he, he spoke into my life. He used his influence to encourage me. You might be here today and you might be an older person. And you've been through some things. You've been through some difficulties. And when you go to work tomorrow, somebody who's going through some trouble may be worried about how they're going to face tomorrow. How they're going to face today. And you, with your experience of how God has brought you through, can brighten up somebody's day by simply looking at them and saying, you know what? You're going to make it. It's going to be all right. You're going to get through this. God's going to watch over you. And you know what? I'm going to pray for you. See, you don't have to be a great theologian to make a difference in the kingdom. Simply by being Christ-like in every place you go is influencing people with the word of God. And so it's not a matter of, of all of us being preachers or getting degrees to understand theology. It's all of us being willing to be used. That's what I like about, you know, uh, today is Disaster Relief uh, Sunday for the Kentucky Baptist Convention. What I like about that ministry is that these folks want to be used. Can Disaster Relief people all over the country, not just Kentucky Baptists, but uh, Tennessee Baptists and all kinds of other groups all across the country, uh, Georgia Baptists, whatever you want to call these folks dedicate themselves to doing what they can do. And they, they fund their own way to get there. Some of them take vacation. Some of them are retired. Whatever they do, they sleep on hard floors. They sleep in church buildings. They do all that stuff. And like, like Tom mentioned to you this morning, you don't have to be a preacher. Some folks are just going in there to do a mud out. Well, how can you make a difference just doing a mud out? Have you ever had your house flood? When you got three or four or five inches of mud in your house and somebody shows up with a shovel... Is that not an answer to prayer? Huh? Absolutely it is. So it doesn't, you don't have to always be a, 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 have all the words, all the answers, simply showing up with a, a shovel or having a hot meal or doing something nice for your neighbor. The Lord's promise of counsel implies that he is personally advising each of us and giving us individualized direction for our lives. You never have to fear that he's an impersonable God who does not care nor won't help you with your need. His eye is upon us, taking note of every circumstance that we're dealing with, and he guides us through them. 
Listen to me this morning. No matter what we're facing, his will is to show us how to respond to the principles in God's word. Our response to anything are to always be brought back to the word of God. Christian, now listen to me. We all need to get better at this, including the preacher. But no matter what we face today, we need to begin to say, you know what? God's with me. It's going to be all right. God, God is with me. He's in me. He's for me. It's going to be okay. It may not turn out the way that I want it to. It may not work out the way that I hoped it would. But I know beyond a shadow of doubt that if God is with me, He's in me, He's for me, He will work it out for my best. See, the, the thing about it is you need to understand that some things we pray for, thank God we didn't get them. Amen? Some of y'all pray for wives. Thank God you didn't get them. Some of y'all prayed for husbands. You thought, boy, he was a good-looking fella. If I could just hook up with him. Well, he might look good on the outside, but what you didn't know is he was a 20-pound gorilla at home. Thank God you didn't get all those prayers answered that you thought that you needed. Sometimes God doesn't answer the way that we want to, but he knows what's best for us. Number two, God's guidance. Number two, God's guidance includes warnings and blessings. God's guidance includes warnings and blessings. Look at what he says here in verse, um, verse number nine. This is the warning. Do not be like a horse or the mule which has no understanding but must be controlled by a bit or bridle or they will not come to you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord's loving kindness shall surround him. It, notice what it goes on to say in verse 11. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Now notice what he says there. I like how this is put. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. Who's supposed to rejoice and be glad? The righteous. You and I, the church. We're supposed to rejoice and be glad. Are you rejoicing and being glad in the midst of a worldwide pandemic? Are we rejoicing that, you know what, things are changed, but bless God, He's going to get us through it. Things are different. Things are, are slowed down. Things have been closed. But God's going to get us through it. But most of the time, folks, we we got we to gotta guard ourselves that we don't get into the rest of what the rest of the world is doing. Doom and gloom. Oh, Lord. Oh, how are we going to make it? How are we going to get through it? Oh, I don't, I'm going to die. No, listen. Rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. When it's good, rejoice. When it's bad, rejoice. The righteous should always rejoice. There ought to be a song on our lips. This is the day the Lord has made. You ought to be walking around during the week when you realize how blessed you are. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. Anybody catch yourself singing that song during the week? Oh, yeah. That's the hour to be our prayer to God. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Don't be like the mule. Pam and I were taking a trip. And I don't remember exactly where we were going, but we were, uh, we were on, on a trip going somewhere. And uh, I missed the turn. I missed a turn. And she said, you missed it. I said, no, I didn't. She said, you missed a turn. I said, I did not. She said, I, she said, you missed the turn. I said, I did not. I know where I'm going. I'm making good time. Well, about 15 minutes later, I realized she's right. I missed the turn. I had to backtrack. So after about 20 minutes of silence, nobody saying nothing in the car. She didn't say nothing to me, and I didn't say nothing to her. We drove down the interstate and over to the side of the interstate was a, a, a big old field. And in the field was some donkeys. And I looked over at her and I said, family of yours? And she said, yes, by marriage. <laughs> some of y'all have been that way, right? When we trust in Christ, we are surrounded by God's loving kindness. 
However, if we're living in sin and doubt, we won't be able to perceive God's loving kindness. Instead of seeing all his blessings, we'll be surrounded by troubles, frustrations, fears, and sufferings, and heartaches. Sometimes we just need to open our eyes and look around and give the Lord credit for his protection and his provision. And then we'll experience the joy of the Lord. I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to stop right there this morning because I want to ask you something today. I want you to be real honest here a minute. Ain't no doubt we've gone through some tough times in 2020. I don't know what the rest of 2020 will bring. We may have some more hard times yet to go through. There's no doubt that the opinion of, of the world is, um, is changing towards the church. We can have casinos open in uh, Las Vegas at 50% capacity, but you can't have churches open. You can have commerce going in California, but you can't have churches open. So things are changing, thought processes towards the church, especially as men's hearts get more liberal and away from the things of God. But when I say liberal, I don't mean politics. I mean liberal in the way of thinking, that we can do this without God, that we can, we can make it without church. We can make it without reading our Bible. We can make it without God. Because God, the liberal thinking mindset that's wandered away from God says God's not real. We don't need Him. So if things are going to get if things don't turn around things are going to get tougher. And I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to face hard times. But here's what I am going to ask you this morning. When you face the hard times, how are you responding to them? How are you responding to your hard times? Are you rejoicing? Are you rejoicing and giving thanks? Or do you go about, do you break out in full-fledged panic mode? Now, I want you to think about that really seriously this morning. How are you, how are you responding to when things get difficult? Because everybody can be happy when things are great, right? Things are great, everybody's happy. You ain't got a care in the world when everything's going well. It's in the hard times that your character is defined. And so in the hard time, how do you respond? Oh, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. Or do you respond that I'm trusting in my God no matter what happens? I place my faith and trust in Him. You see, the, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is today is that there's a whole lot of people in our land today that is hopeless. They're facing hopelessness. And a lot of folks in our land, because they face hopelessness, end up taking their lives. But I need to tell you today that no matter how hopeless it looks, it's never completely hopeless. Because the creator of the world is in control of all things. And so you may be going through a dark patch right now, but it's not hopeless. Jesus is still on the throne. God is still in control. It may seem hopeless in our eyes because we can't see the future. But I'm going to tell you, there is no hopelessness in the kingdom. There is no hopelessness in, in, in God's uh, way of doing things. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom and his way of doing things, and all these things will be added to you. If we sought the kingdom first, when there is no hopelessness, there is no pandemic, there is no lack, when we sought the kingdom first, we would have hope as people, knowing that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, knowing that, that God is going to walk with me closer than a brother. Knowing that hard times come and hard times go. But if we put our trust in God, we'll have faith to face tomorrow. Don't you like that song, Because He Lives? I can what? Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, what's those next words, you remember? He holds the future. Life is what? Worth the living. I like the next word to it. Just. Life is not worth living because I got money in my bank account. I got a nice vehicle and a nice home. Life is with, worth living just because. What? He lives. he lives. Even if I didn't have a home. Even if I didn't have a nice car. Even if I didn't have a food to eat. Life is worth the living. Just because he lived. 
If you were to write one sentence about your life this morning and how you're making an impact, what would it say? I'm making a difference when I walk into the grocery store because I decide to have a smile on my face. I make a difference when I walk into work on Monday morning just by being happy, even though everything around me is going bonkers. I make a decision. I make a decision to make a difference in my life when I sit down at the dinner table today if I'm going out to eat and I've got a little waitress that is working her self to get me everything I need. I make a difference by leaving her just a little bit extra because I've been blessed. I make a difference in, in somebody's life. Listen, you make a difference every Sunday. Every Sunday you make a difference by simply showing up here. You say, well, I'm not doing that, but sitting in a chair. Oh, you're doing something. You're, an encur you're encouraging me. Because I can't do what I'm doing if you don't show up. I guess I could talk to the empty parking lot. Or over this uh, thing here. Maybe somebody drive by and listen. But you're a blessing just by showing up. Make your life count. And make it count starting right now. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. Maybe we've got tied into all the stuff of the world and we're doing a lot of fussing and complaining because everything's upside down. Maybe we're in fear because we're afraid we're going to get sick. Maybe we're in fear because we're afraid we're going to lose our job. Maybe we're discouraged because our bodies are not well. 